Once again guys, welcome back to NG Tricks. Here we are dealing with most important current affairs that comes in various governmental exams and also we are discussing the important job alerts that helps the candidates to pursue their dreams and perform better in the exams. In this video, we are going to present the important last week current affairs. So guys, please watch the session, share the session to your friends and colleagues and support and subscribe to the channel. So let's start with the first topic. First one is from the topic books and others. Here it is. A book title Ambedkar and Modi released by former president Ramnath Kovind. And let's go in detail. Former president Ramnath Kovind has launched book title Ambedkar and Modi Reformers, Ideas, Performance, Implementation. And the book offers insight into the life, work and achievements of B.R. Ambedkar from a scholarly perspective and also presents a convergence between his ideals and New India's development journey. And through its 12 chapters focusing on variants like infrastructure, socio-economic mobility, gender equality, education, self-reliance and many more. And the book not only presents Dr. B. R. Ambedkar's vision of India but also takes into account the several achievements of Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his government. Next one is from the topic Defense. Here it is. BSF's first female camel riding squad to be deployed along the India-Pakistan border. Uh, let's go in detail. Border Security Force first female camel riding will be deployed along the India-Pakistan border. In Gujarat and Rajasthan and actually what is BSF? A central armed police force that functions under the union government. It was raised in 1965 in the aftermath of india Pakistani war and the border security force director general is Pangash Kumar Singh and the border security was from December 1, 1965 and the border security force headquartered at New Delhi, India. This is also a topic from defense. Here it is, IAF's project for Indian defense companies to equip Israeli Heron drones. Let's go in detail. Indian Air Force's project Cheetah, the Israeli Heron drones would be equipped with strike capabilities part of Indian Air Force's project Cheetah under the Make in India program. The project Cheetah aims to improve the Indian Air Force fleet of Israeli made Heron and manned aerial vehicles with stronger communication capabilities and long range missiles than hit enemy sites. And the forces on the ground would be able to gather precise intelligence regarding hiding places in regions where men must participate in options with the improvement in surveillance capabilities. And other details are the Chief of Air Force Staff of India is Air Chief Marshal V. R. Chaudhary. Next one is from the topic National Affairs. Here it is. Andaman and Nicobar Islands become India's first Swiss Sujal Pradesh. Let's go in detail. Union Jal Shakti Minister Gajendra Singh Shekhawat declared Andaman and Nicobar Islands as India's first Swachh Sujal Pradesh. On World Water Day 22 March 2021, Andaman and Nicobar Islands were declared to have achieved 100% coverage of rural households with tap water connection. It became the third state or union territory in the country to achieve 100% coverage of rural households with tap water supply after Goa and Telangana. And the Andaman and Nicobar Islands Lieutenant Governor is Admiral D.K. Joshi. Next one is on the topic Defense. Here it is. Patrol Samarth Commission with Indian Coast Guard. Let's go in detail. Patrol Vessel Samarth Commission, the new ship for the Indian Coast Guard in Kochi will unquestionably improve the operational capability of Indian Coast Guard at sea. And the 45 meter long ICGS Samarth can travel at a top speed of 20 knots that is approximately 43 km per hour. And the ship was operating under the operational cost of Coast Guard District Headquarters for that is Kanmahi, Kochi since it was headquartered from Goa. And the twin engine helicopter and four high speed boats including two inflatable boats for boarding operations, search and rescue operations, law enforcement and maritime patrol are all intended to be carried by the ship. And the ship is equipped with a cutting edge surveillance system and has the ability to control marine oil spills. Next one is from the topic national affairs. Here it is. Saffron from Kashmir, GI tagged on sites both domestic and abroad. 
Let's go in detail. Farmers in the Jammu and Kashmir are now able to sell their products on domestic and international marketplaces by GI tag of saffron and Kashmir. And other details of this topic are capital of Jammu Kashmir, Srinagar. It is a union territory now. And the Lieutenant Governor of Jammu and Kashmir is Sri Manas Singha. Next one is from the topic summits and conferences. Here it is. India assumes the SEO's rotating presidency and will host the 2023 summit. Let's go in detail. In Samarkand, Uzbekistan, India received the Shanghai Corporation Organization rotating presidency and the next meeting of Shanghai Corporation Organization Council of Heads of State will be held in 2023 in India. And the member states of the Shanghai Corporation Organization noted the various global threats and challenges at the summit including digital and technological debate, the ongoing volatility of the world's financial markets, the instability of supply chains and the rise of protectionism and the unpredictability of the global economy. And when the Shanghai Corporation Organization was founded in 2001, it had six founding members that is China, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Russia, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan. And the SEO has 8 full members in 2027, Pakistan and India become full members. It has grown over time to become one of the biggest trans-regional international organizations. At the Samarkand conference, Iran was accepted as a permanent member of Shanghai Corporation Organization. Next one is from the topic Summits and Conferences. The 10th meeting of IBSA Trilateral Ministerial Commission is held in New York. And let's go in detail. The 10th meeting of the India-Brazil-South Africa Dialogue Forum that is also known as IBSA Trilateral Ministerial Commission was held in New York, America. And Dr. S. Jayashankar, the Minister of External Affairs, presided over the meeting. And the ministers occurred that permanent representation of African countries on the Union Security Council should be ensured. And they discussed issues of shared concerns such as South-South Cooperation, UNSC Reform, the 2003 Agenda and the Sustainable Development Goals, Climate Change, Terrorist Prevention and Finance for Humanitarian Operations alongside the G20 Summit in November of this year, India will host the 6th IBS and the India represented by Dr. S. Jay Shankar, Minister of External Affairs, Government of India. Brazil, represented by Carlos Alberto Franco, Brazil's Minister of Foreign Affairs. And the South Africa, represented by Dr. Joe Fala, Africa's Minister of Health. And next one is from the topic, Awards and Honours. Here it is. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation honours four leaders with 2022 Goalkeepers Global Award. And let's go in detail. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation honored four changemakers with the 2022 Goalkeepers World Goals Awards as a part of its annual Goalkeepers campaign. And the award recognizes their efforts to advance progress towards the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals in their communities and around the world. And the award is where for the Global Goalkeeper Award, Ushula won their land and the campaign award was won by Vanessa Nakate and the Changemaker Award was won by Sara Joya and this award was won by Dr. Radhika Batra and the Goalkeepers Global Goals Award ceremony was organized in Lincoln Center, New York, United States. Next one is from the topic Defense. Here it is. Abhya Drill, India and US Coast Guards Showcase Maritime Ties. And let's go in detail. The Coast Guards of India and its states participated of the coast of Chennai in Massive Abhyas Drill or the Abhyas Joint Drill and the US Coast Guard ship and the Indian Coast Guard ship discussed practices for search and rescue operations while they were in port. And the joint training exercises aimed to promote a free and open in speak region and familiarize the Coast Guards of the two nations with one another's capabilities. And the exercises other high points included the interception of a pirated, a well organized combined boarding operation, a SAR demonstration, and external firefighting to save burning ships. And additional information is, Director General of Coast Guard of India is Virender Singh Pataniya. Next one is from the topic Defense. Here it is. Indian Navy launches two diving support vessels 
Nistar and Nippur in Visar. Let's go in detail. Two indigenously designed and built diving support vessels, Nistar and Nippur, were launched by the Indian Navy in Visakhapatnam. And the vessels built by Hindustan Shipyard Limited were launched by Kala Harikumar in presence of Admiral Har Harikumar, the Chief of Naval Staff who presided over the ceremony as Chief Guest. The vessels, which are 118.4 meters long and 22.8 meters wide, will be deployed for deep sea diving operations. Nistar and Nippon were launched by achieving approximately 80% indigenous content and major step forwards towards self reliance. And the first of the two DSVs, Nistar and Nippon, each with a displacement of 9,350 tons, is likely to be delivered to the Indian Navy by July 2023. And they are the first of their kind ships to be indigenously designed and built for the Navy. Next one is from the topic Science and Technology. Here it is. ISRO tests hybrid motors successfully plans to develop new rocket propulsion technology and let's go in detail the test was supported by the isro liquid propulsion system center also known as lpc the motor's fuel was hydroxyl terminated polybutadiene also known as htpb while the oxidizer was liquid oxygen also known as lox and as contrast to solid solid or liquid liquid combinations a hybrid motor uses solid fuel and liquid oxidizer it was explained that throttling was made simpler by the use of liquids and restarting was made feasible by controlling the flow rate of lox although stpb and lox both promote environmental sustainability isro claims that lox is safer to handle the test of a hybrid motor with a 30 kN flight equivalent exhibited ignition and sustained combustion for the anticipated 50 seconds. According to the statement from ASR, the motor ability was sufficient. On September 26, NASA's DART mission to collide with an asteroid. Let's go in detail. In order to test a cruise technology that might be used to divert asteroids heading towards Earth, the double asteroid redirection test mission which is nearing the end of its life will fall on an asteroid. In order to plot a course to its target, it took pictures of stars and planets with its Didymos reconnaissance and asteroid camera for optical navigation, also known as TRACO. The spacecraft has traveled through our solar system in a heavenly direction, sailing close to the planet and pointed at a distant stars. In order to support continuing spacecraft testing, and rehearsals leading up to the spacecraft kinetic impact into the Morphos. NASA released this photograph of Jupiter with its four moons that was taken by the DART mission. And the Jupiter's moon Europa emerged from behind the planet. The mission team focused the TRACO major at the planet to test the smart navigation system. Next one is from the topic India's first successful full lab transplant performed in Kerala hospital. Let's go in detail. India's first full arm transplant was performed at the uh, based Amrita hospital in Ernakulam. It is third of its type of the world. Such a transplant was only performed recently in Mexico and France. And after receiving several requests for limb transplants from across the world, which includes several parts of Middle Eastern countries and Southeastern Asian countries, Amrita hospital in Kochi accepted the request to perform a shoulder level full arm transplant and the team of the doctors for the full arm surgery was led by Dr. Subramanian Iyer, head of the center of plastic and reconstruction surgery and Dr. Mohit Sharma, professor center of plastic and reconstruction surgery. Gayaji Dam becomes India's longest rubber dam. It was built across Falgu River in Gaya district, Bihar. The dam was inaugurated by Nidish Kumar, the chief minister of Bihar. It is made of 70 mm thick rubber which is a bulletproof structure. The dam is 400 meter wide and its height is 3 meters. In this dam water will be stored for about 2.5 kilometers. India becomes fourth rank in global crypto adoption report 2022 with an index score of 0.663. Vietnam is the list topper with index score 1 and followed by Philippines with index score 0.753 and then Ukraine with an index score of 0.694. Total 154 countries listed in this report. 
ടെന്നീസ് ലെജൻഡ് റോജർ ഫെഡറർ അനൗൺസ് ഇസ് റിട്ടയർമെൻറ്റ് ഫ്രം പ്രൊഫഷണൽ ടെന്നീസ് അറ്റ് ദി ഏജ് ഓഫ് ഫോർട്ടി വൺ ഈസ് എ സ്വിറ്റ്സർലാൻഡ് ടെന്നീസ് പ്ലെയർ ആൻഡ് ദി ലേവർ കപ്പ് ടു തൗസൻഡ് ട്വൻറ്റി ടു വിൽ ബി ഈസ് ഫൈനൽ എ ടി പി ടൂർണമെൻറ്റ് ഈ ഹഡ് എ വെരി ഗുഡ് അച്ചീവ്മെൻറ്റ് ഇൻ മെൻ സിംഗിൾസ് ടെന്നീസ് ആൻഡ് സം ഓഫ് ദ മാർ ആസ് ഫോളോസ് ഈ ഇസ് ദ പ്ലെയർ വിത്ത് മോസ്റ്റ് നമ്പർ ഓഫ് മാച്ച് വിൻസ് ഇൻ ഓപ്പൺ ഇയറ വിത്ത് എ ടോട്ടൽ മാച്ച് വിൻ ഓഫ് തൗസൻഡ് ടു ഹൺഡ്രഡ് ആൻഡ് ഫിഫ്റ്റി വൺ ബിഹൈൻ ജിമ്മി കോണേഴ്സ് ഹു ഹാവ് ടോട്ടൽ മാച്ച് വിൻ ഓഫ് തൗസൻഡ് ടു ഹൺഡ്രഡ് ആൻഡ് സെവൻറ്റി ഫോർ ആൻഡ് റോജർ ഫെഡറർ ഹോൾഡ് ദി റെക്കോർഡ് വിൻ അറ്റ് വിംബിൾഡൺ ദറ്റ് ഈസ് ഈ വൺ വിംബിൾഡൺ എയ്റ്റ് ടൈംസ് ഇൻ മെൻ സിംഗിൾസ് ആൻഡ് ഈസ് എ തേർഡ് ബെസ്റ്റ് ഗ്രാൻഡ് സ്ലാം വിന്നർ വിത്ത് ട്വൻറ്റി ഗ്രാൻഡ് സ്ലാം ടൈറ്റിൽസ് ബിഹൈൻ പെയിൻസ് റാഫേൽ നദാൽ ആൻഡ് സെർബിയാസ് നോവക് ജോക്കോവിച്ച് ഈ ഹാസ് ദി മോസ്റ്റ് ഗ്രാൻഡ് സ്ലാം മെയിൻ മാച്ച് വിൻ വിത്ത് ത്രീ സിക്സ്റ്റി നയൻ വിൻസ് and in case of atp titles he holds second position in winning most number of atp titles with 103 titles and the player above him is jimmy corner with 109 titles and he is the oldest player ever who have achieved the world number one spot at the age of 36 years and 320 days and he is the oldest men player to win wimbledon at the age of 35 years and 342 days on 2017 and he also had a record of holding the world number one position for 237 consecutive weeks and also he is the only men player to win at least 10 titles on clay grass and hard court project cheetah is world's first intercontinental large wild carnivore translocation project by this project india reintroduced cheetah in kuno national park madhya pradesh we have introduced eight cheetah as a part of this project as per official records the last cheetah was lived in india on 1952 in world wrestling championship held at belgrade in serbia India's Bajrang Punia won men's 65 kg freestyle bronze medal and he is the only wrestler in India to have four medals in world wrestling championship and also India's Vinish Fogot won women's 53 kg freestyle bronze medal and she is the first to own wrestler in India to win gold medal in both commonwealth and asian games Sunil Chaudhary's Bangalore FC won 131st edition of Duran Cup by defeating Mumbai City FC by two against one goal and about the duran cup it is the oldest existing club football tournament in asia and the third oldest in the world and mohan bagan and east bengal were the two successful teams in this tournament both of them have 16 titles each bangladesh won sixth edition of saf that is south asian football federations women's championship by defeating nepal in the final by 3 against 1 goal and this is nepal's fifth final loss and about this tournament india is the most successful team in, in this tournament by lifting all the five previous year trophies in this year india lost to nepal in semi finals india's first dugong conservation is established at palk bay tamil nadu this area is about 500 square kilometer and this area provides the ideal habitat for dugong dolphin and turtles and about dugong it is a marine mammal actually it is a fully aquatic herbivorous mammal it can live within 10 meter depth not far from the shore it weighs up to 300 kg and this mammal is 3.5 to 5 meters long on september 17 we are celebrating international patient safety day this day is organized in order to increase public awareness enhance global understanding and call for solidarity and united action by all countries and international partners to increase patient safety and reduce patient harm the theme of this year's international patient safety day is medication safety it was organized by world health organization and the first celebration of international patient safety day is held on 2019 We are celebrating International Coastal Cleanup Day on September 17. This event is organized in order to reduce the amount of plastic and other waste that end up in our oceans. This year the theme of International Coastal Cleanup Day is Fighting for Trash-Free Seas. This event was organized by the Ocean Conservancy and we have started celebrating International Coastal Cleanup Day from 1986 onwards. International Red Panda Day is celebrated on September 17. This event was generally celebrated on 3rd Saturday of September and this event is organized in order to spread awareness about the standard population of these animals and the ways to protect their habitat and subsequently them. This event was organized by the Red Panda Network and it was firstly celebrated on 2010. On September 18 we are celebrating International Equal Pay Day. This event was organized in order to end the history of gender discrimination that women are generally subjected to by getting paid less than their male counterparts. This day was organized by the National Committee on Pay Equity and this event was firstly celebrated on 1996. World Water Monitoring Day is celebrated on September 18. This event was organized in order to build public involvement and awareness regarding the protection of water resources around the globe by ensuring that citizens are empowered to 
carry out standard monitoring of their local water bodies. This even the theme of World Water Monitoring Day is groundwater making the invisible visible. The day was organized by America's Clean Water Foundation and we have started celebrating this event from 2003 onwards. On September 18, we are also celebrating World Bamboo Day. This event was organized in order to promote the cultivation of bamboo for new industries around the globe. The event was organized by Kameh Salam. He was the former president of the World Bamboo Organization and we have started celebrating World Bamboo Day from 2009 onwards. International Day of Peace is observed on September 21st. This event was organized in order to strengthen the ideals of peace through observing 24 hours of non-violence and ceasefire. This year the theme of International Day of Peace is End Racism, Build Peace. This event was organized by the United Nations General Assembly and we have started celebrating International Day of Peace from 1982 onwards. World Alchemist Day is observed on September 21st and this event was organized in order to raise awareness and challenge the common stigma that surrounds Alzheimer related dementia. This year the theme of World Alzheimer Day is No Dementia, No Alzheimer's. This day was organized by Alzheimer's Disease International and we have started celebrating World Alzheimer's Day from 1994 onwards. World Gratitude Day is observed on September 21st. This event was organized in order to recognize the transformative power gratitude has to heal, energize and drive cultural changes in the workplace. It was organized by Sri Chimoy. He was a spiritual leader and meditation teacher. This event was firstly organized on 1965. International Day of Radiant Peace is observed on September 22. This event was organized in order to increase awareness about Radiant Peace and promote Radiant Peace project around the world. And this event was firstly organized by David J. Fisher. He was the mayor of St. Petersburg, Florida. And we have started celebrating International Day of Radiant Peace from 1999 onwards. World Rhino Day is observed on September 22. This event was organized in order to highlight the five species of Rhino to be saved from any kind of illegal practices done by human beings. This year, the theme of World Rhino Day is Fire Rhino Species Forever. This event was firstly organized by Lisa Jane Campbell and Trish Chakota. And we have started celebrating World Rhino Day from 2011 onwards. World Car Free Day is celebrated on September 22 and this event is organized in order to promote more environment friendly means of commuting such as walking, cycling and public transport. This event was organized by the Commons, WC Bar, FT program and Earth Day Network. It was firstly celebrated on 2000. World Rose Day is celebrated on September 22. This event is organized in order to honor cancer patients worldwide and it is also celebrated in order to commemorate Melinda Rose. She was a 12 year old Canadian young lady. She passed away due to this disease in 1996. International Day of Sign Language is celebrated on September 23 and this event was organized in order to support the linguistic identity of hearing impaired community and others who use sign language for communication. This year the theme of International Day of Sign Language is Sign Language Unite Us. This event was organized by the United Nations General Assembly and we have started celebrating International Day of Sign Languages from 2018 onwards. On September 23rd, we are celebrating National Cinema Day. This event was organized in order to commemorate the successful reopening of movie halls. This event was organized by the Multiplex Association of India and it's our May Day National Cinema Day celebration. Uh, now we can discuss about some other news headlines. The Monetary Authority of Singapore and the International Financial Service Centre Authority signed an agreement to promote regulatory collaboration and partnership in the fintech domain. And SBI joined with Remitly which enables NRIs to use mobile and web applications to send money to their family members through SBI via Remitly while launching at home. Saras, it is launched by Israeli Embassy in India and Kushi Foundation in order to raise awareness about menstruation health, cleanliness and improve skills and capacity for women. Kodak Mahindra Bank launched Everyday Savings Account. PM Promotion of Alternate Nutrients for Agriculture Management Yojana that is PM Pranam Scheme it is implemented in order to reduce the use of chemical fertilizers. MotoGP confirms Bharat Grand Bridge and the inaugural event may take place in 2023. So these are all about the current affairs from last one week. I will share this PDF in our Telegram channel. You can take it for reference purpose. We can meet in the next video with some updated news. Until then, bye.